We'll begin with your warm up in the composition book. Go ahead and complete these eight problems. I'll show you one as an example. 21 times 2 is 42. There is an invisible 1 down here. So 1 times 3 is 3. And then if we divide 42 by 3, that gives us 14. Another way that you could approach this problem is by dividing out 3 goes into 3 one time, and 3 goes into 21 seven times. Then you have 7 times 2, which is 14. Not all of them are going to come out to whole numbers. Some of them will be left as fractions. You can leave them as an improper fraction if you like, or change them to a mixed number. It's really up to you. If you need time, you can pause the video here to complete this before moving on to the next one. Here we have the ratio of the number of parts of sugar to the number of parts in, of water in hummingbird food is two-fifths to one. So you can see here the two-fifths and then one whole. So the question is, how much sugar would we need for four parts of water? If we were to do that, we could multiply both parts of the ratio by 4. 1 times 4 gives us those four parts of water. And 2 fifths times 4 would be 8 fifths. You can leave it like that, or you can change it to 1, because 1 set of 5 fits into 8 with 3 parts left over. A bread recipe calls for two cups of whole wheat flour for every six cups of white flour. Complete the ratio table. So you can see here that they divided by six. Well, two divided by six is two sixths, or we can reduce that to one third. To get from here to here, it's 2 divided by 2 that gives us 1. So we would need 6 divided by 2 to tell us what goes in that one, which is 3. And then we have our completed table. It says, complete the following statement. For every one cup of white flour, the recipe calls for blank cups of whole wheat flour. So for one cup of white, one cup of white, we needed a third a cup of whole wheat. But for every one cup of whole wheat, we needed three cups of white. How are the first two rows of the table similar? Three and one third are what's called reciprocals. That's a fancy way of saying it's the flipped over version. So 3 over 1 flips over to make 1 third. Another way that they are both similar is it shows for one of something. Either wheat flour or white flour. How are the first two rows of the table different? We had a fraction in one, 
and a whole number in the other, one had one cup of white, and the other row had one cup of wheat. Oh, apparently I changed the color. The number of cups of flour, white flour is always blank times the number of cups of whole wheat flour. So we're looking for how many times the number of cups of whole wheat flour. Here we had a one and a three. So the wheat times three tells us the white. If we're working backwards, one times one third would tell us the wheat. The number of cups of whole wheat flour is always one third times the number of cups of white flour. Here you can see they multiplied by three to get the cups of white flour. And then if we were going the opposite direction, three times one third is one. Number two, the ratio table shows the number of cups of brown sugar and the number of cups of ketchup in a recipe for a homemade sauce. We are going to complete the ratio table. I see here that this is 3 divided by 3 gives me 1. So 2 divided by 3 will tell me what goes in this box, which is just 2 thirds. We also need to figure out the second row. I see 2 divided by 2 is 1, so 3 divided by 2 will go in this box, which is 3 over 2, or you can rewrite it as 1 and a half. Describe the relationship between the number of cups of brown sugar and the number of cups of ketchup. Well, there are two thirds cup of brown sugar for each or for one cup. Of ketchup. The number of cups of ketchup is always 3 over 2 times the number of cups of brown sugar. In that second row where we see 1 and 3 over 2, 1 times 3 over 2 tells us the number of cups of ketchup. How many cups of ketchup will need to be mixed with 10 cups of brown sugar? to make the homemade sauce. Well, we know that the number of cups of ketchup is always three over two times that. 10 times three is 30. With that invisible one down here, one times two is two. And two fits into 30 15 times, which means we need 15 cups of ketchup. For problems three through five, use the given ratio to complete the sentences. Sana uses shaving cream and glue to make slime. The ratio of the number of tablespoons of shaving cream to the number of tablespoons of glue is two to one. So for every tablespoon of glue, she uses blank tablespoons of shaving cream. And in here we saw that for shaving cream, to glue, the ratio is two to one.
So for each tablespoon of glue, she uses two tablespoons of shaving cream. For every tablespoon of shaving cream she uses, so if we change this to one, we would need to change this to one half, which means she uses half of a tablespoon of glue. Remember we talked earlier about how the reciprocals show up, the flipped over version of those numbers. Tyler fills fruit baskets with apples and bananas. The ratio of the number of apples to the number of bananas in each basket is 12 to 3. So for every apple in the basket, the basket has blank bananas. So for every one apple, that means we divide by 12, 3 twelfths of a banana. But 3 twelfths is not in its simplest form, so we can reduce that. 3 goes into 3 one time, and 3 goes into 12 four times, which reduces it to 1 fourth. For every one banana, the basket has blank apples. So 3 divided by 3 and 12 divided by 3. If there is one banana, there are four apples. Continuing on. In a recipe for trail mix, the ratio of the number of cups of cashews to the number of cups of almonds is 2 to 3. There are blank times as many almonds as cups of cashews. So to figure this out, we're going to divide that ratio. And then it says there are blank times as many cups of cashews as cups of almonds. This would be that flipped over version. In this next part, if you are in person, we are going to do a station activity. Otherwise, I will show you an example of one of the stations on here. It says, complete as many stations as you can in the time allotted. Create a ratio table or other diagram to explain your solution to the problem at each station. So I am going to insert a table for station one. It says, Toby uses a pancake recipe to make pancakes for his family reunion. The pancake recipe requires two cups of flour. So I'm going to put F here for flour for every 10 pancakes. So I'm putting P for pancakes. So we had two cups of flour for 10 pancakes. Write a ratio to show the relationship between the number of cups of flour and the number of cups of pancakes. Or not the number of cups, just the number of pancakes. That ratio would be 2 to 10. Then complete the two statements. The number of pancakes is blank times the number of cups of flour. So how could I multiply the flour by something to get the amount of pancakes? Well, 2 times 5 is 10. The second statement reads, the number of cups of flour is, is blank times the number of cups of pancakes. So if we were going the other way, what could I multiply 10 by that would give me 2? 10 times 1 fifth gives me 2. Part C reads, if Toby makes 70 pancakes, how many cups of flour will he use? Well, that is 10 times 7. And 2 times 7 would be 14. If Toby uses 5 cups of flour, how many pancakes will he make? Well, this would be times 
5 over 2. So we would multiply 10 times 5 over 2. 10 times 5 is 50. And 50 divided by 2 is 25. So he would make 25 pancakes. And the other stations continue in a similar manner with different scenarios. But we're just going to do one in this virtual lesson. So make sure you have your warm-up completed and you have the work filled in in your workbook. And that should do it.